Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about the economic calendar. Then we'll talk about the Fed futures. And then I'll give my two cents here on the Silicon Valley Bank situation that everyone seems to be talking about. Then we'll go over the chart. And then we'll look at my results for the day and my positions going into Monday. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So looking at the economic calendar, we got the unemployment rate, non-farm payrolls came in a little bit hot, but definitely not nearly as hot as last time. So not too bad there. And then the unemployment rate actually did tick up here to 3.6, which is definitely good. Hourly wages month over month ticked up 0.2, much better than expectation at 0.4. And then year over year wages, 4.6, a little bit below expectations at 4.8. So good to see wages decreasing. Federal budget also came in slightly better. Overall, not too bad, just a little bit hot on the non-farm payrolls. Looking at next week, and we'll talk about this a little bit more on the weekend video here, but keep in mind we have CPI on Tuesday, and then the very next day we have PPI, so lots of inflation data coming out next week in preparation for the Fed meeting the following week on the 21st and 22nd, so next week is going to be big, and also next week is the third week expiration for options, so tons of data and tons of money in the markets, and we have to keep an eye on all of that going into next week. Moving over to Fed futures here, you can see we are back in the lead here at 25 basis points. 50 basis point dropped to 41.7% from 60% yesterday. So we continue to juggle. Obviously, CPI and PPI will have a big impact on this. But right now, 25 basis points is back in the lead for the next couple meetings all the way until we get to July. Moving over to May, you can see 25 basis points is still the recommendation. And then looking at June, you can see another 25 basis points. And then July, they're still expecting a pause. So we did see that switch from 50 basis points to 25 basis points here in March. And we'll have to continue to watch this after Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Looking at the SVB situation, let's talk about it here just for a moment. Basically, this company was pretty highly valued, $600 per share, and it went down to $40. Very, very big drop. So basically what happened is they bought a bunch of bonds. Their balance sheet grew quite a lot when bonds were quite expensive with very low rates. And as interest rates have gone higher with the Fed and those bonds have lost value, their balance sheet took a pretty large hit. Now they had to sell those things at a pretty big loss in order to shore up their balance sheet. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue because you can just hold those bonds until they expire. You don't make very much money, but you don't lose very much. But in this situation, they were forced to liquidate some of their bonds in order to shore up their balance sheet, which means they had to realize those losses. My understanding is the bank is fully closed down now, and they're going to see what they can do to salvage what's left. And you can see that they go over that here. So $1.8 billion loss, mostly from U.S. Treasury securities. Usually these don't lose money, but when interest rates go up and you're holding these bonds, the value of those bonds go down, and that does affect your balance sheet. But like I said before, if you can hold those bonds to maturity, that's not an issue. Unfortunately, they were not able to do so in this case. This certainly could be a situation that many regional banks face. But it seems like SVB was in a particularly special situation since their balance sheet grew quite a lot during the times when interest rates were basically zero. So they bought a bunch of treasuries when, when interest rates were very low and the price of bonds was very high. And as those things have switched over the last year, then they really struggled to maintain a good balance sheet. We'll see if this continues to spread to any other banks, but right now it seems somewhat contained. Moving over to the charts here on the 12 hour and the daily chart here on the S&P 500. You can see here on the 12 hour, we reached up and threw a wick through that 200 moving average. Similarly here on the daily chart through wicks through that 200 day moving average and the 144 EMA here, we're now well low. All of the EMA definitely looks bearish. Certainly in a zone where you find some support though, we're right at the highs going back to this consolidation area from December. Definitely interesting. Certainly should expect some support to come in in this previous consolidation zone. Down here at 382 seems like a strong level. Looking at the 12 hour, you can see the wicks here are down around 370.50. So probably around six more dollars of downside potential. 
It certainly would be interesting if CPI and PPI cause us to wick these lows and then we start to chop sideways. Certainly a possibility. Maybe we drive into those lows and CPI, PPI push us through that level. That would be very bearish. Otherwise here, I'm looking for a bounce in this 382 level. So about another 1% of downward price action. After basically five days of really strong selling, you can see that has resulted in about a 5%, 5.5% loss, which is super aggressive for that short of a time period. And obviously, this cannot go on forever. We've had some pretty strong moves down like I saw here, where we threw a huge wick to the upside. And that ended up being about a 7, 7.5% loss. Going back here, you can see if you go all the way to the most recent high on this move, then we're down about seven and three quarters, almost 8% here on the totality of this move. Certainly very strong move to the downside. And you should expect at some point that we're going to see some buying come in. Lots of volume here on the last day of the week. Definitely interesting. Curious to see if any of that results in some buying here at the end of the week. Otherwise, looking at the indicators, MACD is bearish. Oversold conditions here on the 12-hour RSI, which is interesting. Not quite oversold here on the daily RSI yet. It is fairly unusual to get oversold conditions on the daily chart on the RSI, but definitely already seeing oversold here on the 12-hour chart. Moving over here to the NASDAQ on the 12-hour and the daily, same thesis here. You can see we're actually a little bit stronger, testing the 144 EMA here on the 12-hour, also testing a pretty strong longer-term support line you can see here on the NASDAQ. We have the 200 SMA still to our lows here on the hour. So we also have the longer term downtrend line sitting at that same level, right around 284.50 or so. About another $4 of downward price action from here. We're also at the shorter term channel level where we did find a little bit of support that also correlates with the 55 EMA and the 144 EMA. Certainly an area where we could find some support. Didn't quite test the 144 EMA yet, but certainly could find some support. Lots of high volume on the last day of the week. Similar to the SPY coming off of this most recent high, we're down around 8%, which is a pretty substantial move. But we are still pretty well within this channel here on the NASDAQ. Does look a little bit stronger than the SPY, not oversold on the 12-hour chart. Of course, all of the indicators are still bearish, but keep that in mind as we look forward to next week. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow here on the daily chart, starting off with the Russell, you can see it's been about a 12, 12.5% down move from the most recent high. It's been pretty dramatic. You can see we found some support on this longer term downtrend line, bounced about $2 from that level, got all the way down to 174.16, closed here at 176.36. So pretty nice bounce off of that level, decent area of volume back in this previous consolidation level as well. High volume here definitely looks like it's an area where we could bounce. Oversold conditions on RSI, again, indicating we could get a little bit of a bounce here. MACD still looks very bearish. Moving over to the Dow, similar. We got into the zone that we talked about, previous area where we found a little bit of a bounce. Probably not going to hold here, but we could get a short-term bounce. If we do, then we can go up to probably 325. That's what I would look for. If we do break down from here, then we're looking at these gaps going back to about 310, 311, which is an area where we've had some consolidation on these longer-term moves before. MACD, though, still looks very bearish. RSI, not quite oversold here on the Dow, but volume also very big at this level. Certainly seems interesting going into Monday. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, you can see we had a candle break right through that support level on Apple, came down very close to the 200-day moving average, came up just short of it. I'm sure we'll get through there on Monday if we do continue to sell off. Strong support still here at 146, multiple candles in that zone. If we're going to bounce, I would expect to go through here down to 146, test that level and then bounce. We also have the 55 EMA sitting down here at 142.38, certainly could break through make a lower high, and then we see this kind of channel start to continue to the downside. That would be interesting. Otherwise, looking at Tesla, this continues to look very bearish. Did hold up fairly well today after throwing a strong wick to the downside, which is interesting, but momentum is still very weak. Same here on Apple. Moving over to transports, very similar thesis here on the 12-hour and daily chart. You can see we're getting real close to that 144 and 200-day moving average. Lots of volume here again today. Pretty interesting. Much more volume than we've seen recently. You can, looking at this 12-hour chart, 
not quite at the 200 on the 12 hour, but we are at this area of high volume. If this area does break down, you can see how little volume there was in this previous zone. Certainly a little bit here at 221, right at the trend line. That would be interesting. Maybe we overshoot this just a little bit, find support at the trend line, and then we can continue higher. Remember that transports is in this channel, so we haven't broken down here quite yet. If this lower trend line does break, we come back down to this most recent low around 211. That would be pretty painful, very bad for stocks. But right now, we're still in this channel. We're just testing these lows here. If that does hold up and we get a little bit of a bounce, that should be bullish for equities. 12 hour chart almost oversold. Daily chart not quite there yet. MACD's on both looks very bearish. But like I said, couple of EMAs and SMAs and trend lines to watch here going into Monday session. Moving over to Staples and discretionary. Now we're seeing a pretty clear outperformance here from Staples. Discretionary continues to waterfall. High volume here today, almost double anything that we've seen here recently. Very interesting. Looks very bearish, pushing through this area of highest volume, back through this consolidation zone, right at the bottom of that. Should be a quick sell-off if it's going to happen here. Looking at that most recent low, around 126 about $12 of downside potential. Certainly could be a little bit of a bounce around that 135.50 level. Otherwise, Staples continues to hold this trend line that we've been watching. If it does break down through there, then we're looking probably down to around that 68.50 level back at this most recent low. For right now, we're waiting to see if this 70.75 level is going to break or not. Looking at volume, still very high, continue to grow in volume. Pretty interesting. RSI, weak, but not super weak. RSI on discretionary looks very weak, and MACDs on both looks weak going into the Monday session. Moving over to semiconductors here on the 12 hour and the daily chart. We broke through that high volume area that we talked about. We broke through the trend line, and we're looking to this next lower trend line here, right at that 233 level. Very similar level here on the daily chart, maybe a little bit higher, 233.75. Certainly could be an area of support. We also have the 55 day moving average moving into this zone where we could find a little bit of support as well. Then we have that longer term uptrend that we are in here on semis. Not even really that close to retesting that level quite yet. Probably going to be looking around that 229 to 230 level for support there as well. Certainly could come back in here and find support and then continue higher. Semis have been very strong here, and compared to the rest of the market, they are still quite strong in the medium term. On the short term, all of the indicators do point to more bearish price action coming on Monday. Moving over to yields, you can see yields have fallen off a cliff here, so we're taking out all of these previous prices. Took out the previous consolidation on the 10-year as well. Very bearish. Oversold conditions here on the 4-hour charts and both charts, MACDs, both very bearish. Seems like people are starting to buy up some bonds and a little bit of preparation for potentially some more downside in markets. Also, the unemployment rate starting to go up may have scared the bond market a little bit. And they're probably pricing in a higher potential of getting 25 basis points in March as well. Moving over to the dollar here on the 12 hour and the daily. We've sold off from these most recent resistance lines, and we did come back in and retest support again. So we're still stuck in this range. We're actually back in this most recent consolidation range, which is interesting. Certainly looks to be rolling over bearish a little bit. You can see the RSI here on the 12 hour rolling bearish, as well as the daily chart. Momentum bearish on the 12 hour. Momentum looking to turn bearish here on the daily chart. Looking at the one hour just for a moment, you can see this consolidation that we had overnight and then this big waterfall sell off with the non farms. They weren't nearly as bad as people thought they were going to be, plus the unemployment rate was a little bit higher than generally that should be good for markets. But I think we're just kind of stuck in this situation where we were a little bit overbought. We're starting to see markets move down pretty solid. And even though the dollar is falling, it's not enough to keep up with equities. It's not enough to keep equities higher. Moving over to JNK, you can see we threw a wick up to that previous trend line, got rejection, and then sold off. We got very close to testing the bottom of this wick going back to Tuesday, February 21st. We do take out that low there at 89.59. That'll be very weak. Right now, we got kind of a candle of indecision, kind of stuck here in this range. If this does continue to waterfall off, though, then we have to be very bearish on stocks, even more so. Right now, we're still kind of in this holding pattern here on JNK. And if this low is taken out, then we have to be even more bearish. You can see volume pretty high here recently, similar to the other indices. But RSI, very weak. MACD, very weak. 
And like I said, we're looking to see if, if we do get that breakdown, then we're looking to about 88.65 for your next support. And then all the way down to 87.97, right in that 88 range back at this previous consolidation zone. Moving over to TLT here on the four hour and the daily chart, it basically did exactly what we thought it was going to. We saw this consolidation base, ended up gapping up right into that zone we talked about, got through 104 easily up to 105.50. It's down a little bit here after hours. You can see a little bit of downward price action. Overbought conditions here on the four hour definitely look strong. We now have a gap here on both sides of this move, which is interesting, but overall still very bullish, high volume, bullish momentum. Just a little concerning with the RSI here on the four hour. Otherwise, everything looks strong going into Monday's session. Finishing up with the VIX here, you can see we threw a wick through that longer term trend line, found rejection. So that's very interesting. It's so watching that trend line. I didn't know necessarily we, if we could get that high, but we certainly did. This also correlates with the highs going back to mid September here. Certainly could have expected that we found a little bit of resistance here. I would expect that we're going to come back in and maybe retest 2250, maybe give equities a little bit of room to cool off on Monday before the CPI reading. This is definitely a pretty big upswing here. And if we do find support, then I would be looking to take out this most recent high up around 35. That would be very interesting. Touch these previous highs. And then we should expect to be in an area where we could probably do some longer term buying, in my opinion. Moving over to my accounts, I actually did okay. So I was down still 490, almost $500 here. So not great, but you can see I did decide to hold this IRA position and roll it out five days. I was able to roll all the way down to 179 for a $3.50 credit. So my break even on this position is all the way down here at 175.40 or so, still below the current price. And this does give me quite a bit of room to the downside. And I can continue to roll this position out in time if I need to, to protect myself. And really at this price here on the IWM, I think we're going to be finding some buyers fairly soon. Like I said, I think 171 is possible. But if we do get into that zone, I think we'll probably find some buyers of the IWM in that area. And this is my IRA position. So I have lots of time to roll this out in time and continue to collect credits on these option positions. Otherwise, did end up taking a position here at the 290 puts. I don't know if this was a good idea. It's only in a minus $32 position here, $2.65 credit. So this could be interesting. Definitely a bullish position, looking for a little bit of an upswing after the strong bearish momentum. Fairly strong movement at the end of day to the upside, which was interesting. But otherwise, I did manage to make a little bit of money day trading as well, plus about $130 here. So did protect myself from some losses. But overall, not great, but still not nearly as bad as the markets have been. Let me know down in the comments section what you think the CPI and PPI data is going to do to the markets. And is the SVB bank thing going to spread across the country or is this just a single event that's causing some panic? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.